Hello, hello, good evening everyone, good evening and welcome. So, um, it is Tuesday and it is the second class of the week. So, I hope you guys are feeling great and ready to get started on a new lesson. For tonight, um, we are going to be working on what I mentioned last night, but we didn't do, which are um, mostly the models in the past and uh, um, a little bit of what comes to be um, verbs that go with problems, okay? So those are going to be maybe the, the like main topics that we're gonna cover. If we still have questions regarding the topic of the family, um, we can also, you know, have a little chat about the words or phrases that you guys um, might need to, to know or would like to clarify because um, it is, of course, crucial that we clear out any doubts or questions that we may have. Um, so, yeah, I hope everything is going as smoothly, as I said before. And for tonight, we are going to have, well, the question, all right? The question is not going to be that hard for tonight. The harder questions normally come after the, the third week. But um, right now, the question is relatively simple. We're going to be sharing what is our favorite drink. Okay, so um, think about that. However, the catch is always that when we talk about favorites, we also have to provide an idea of why. Okay, so it's not only that you're going to say, oh, yeah, my favorite drink is Coca-Cola. And just that. No, the idea is that you practice and that you mention the reason why you like Coca-Cola or why you like, you know, the specific drink that you guys are going to pick. So um, let's get started with that. And um, let's start maybe by hearing from Emila. So in your case, what is your favorite drink? Okay. Good evening. Evening. Well, my favorite drink is a mineral soda mm -hmm. with cherry. Oh. Cherry. <laughs> All right. Great. So, or maybe mineral water. That's right. Yeah. Thank oh, okay. All right. So, yeah, great. <laughs> mineral water with cherries. That sounds very interesting. Very, very interesting. Have you ever tried like flavored mineral water? Not salutaris, because salutaris is an idea of mineral water, but not necessarily. But something like Lacroix. Does yeah. it make alguna vez ha probado un, una que se llama Lacroix? Not really. No? Oh, okay. Well, I even think hear it. Yeah, the thing is that that was my first mineral water ever. Like I had never really tried, uh, you know, such a drink before. And uh, once I remember that I tried Lacroix. It's, a ver, se escribe Le Croux, algo así. Supuestamente es en francés. Supuestamente se llama así, Lacroix. Bueno, the thing is that um, when I tried it, uh, the first thing that came to my mind was that I was drinking um, Sal Andrews. The, the, you know, the, 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 the thing that, that we yeah. drink for the stomach that's what i thought i, I felt like i was drinking i was drinking sal juice so that's the reason why mineral water it's not my favorite however there is one that i love um perrier have you ever tried that one yeah that one yeah? okay yeah. so that will be the one that i do like when it comes to um to mineral waters i will say that that's one that i um that i do like but i started with lacroix it wasn't the best experience uh, they sell like different flavors. I think it's like green apple, strawberry, um, blackberry, and pineapple. I think those are like the main flavors in Lacroix. But if you like it, maybe you're going to enjoy it because there's the flavor is really strong. You can really feel the gas. But yeah, it's it's quite an experience. But all okay. right, all right, Thank moving you. on. You're very welcome. Um, how about we hear from? Uh, Ciro, in your case, Ciro, what is your favorite drink? My favorite drink is uh, coffee and natural water. All right. And why do you like coffee? Uh, morning? No, why? Por qué? Uh, I don't know because uh, the, I used to drink coffee 
uh, when I children, I child. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Nice. So, yeah, I mean, um, coffee, I feel... Espero, bueno, no, mejor les cuento después esa parte. Sí, mejor les sigo preguntando ahorita y después les cuento lo que les iba a decir. Um, let's see from Jenny. In your case, Jenny, what is your favorite drink? Like zero. Coffee and water. Okay, and why do you like coffee? I'm not going to ask why do you like water because, yeah, water is just amazing but uh, why do you like um, coffee because it's the most traditional drink in oh. the in the country all right we, Great. we our country produce the the best coffee one of the best coffee in the world all right Great. Nice, nice, nice. Um, moving on then how about we hear from Luis In your case, Luis, what is your favorite drink? Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, uh, I like the coffee too. Really? And why do yeah. you like coffee? So uh, I like the <clears throat> I like the flavor. I I drink coffee all my life since I was a child until today and an uh, old man, but this is a uh, traditional from my family. So my mom and my uncles uh, drank coffee all the time. Yeah. But also I like the, the use of Arayan. I don't know how to say in English Arayan. That's very special for me. Okay. I like it, I like it a lot. Honestly, I don't know how to say Arayan in English either, because, yeah, it's uh, quite a, what you call it, a very specific word. But let's see. Um, porque, por ejemplo, Arayan Myrtle. Okay. It is supposed to be Myrtle. I'm not sure if it is really Myrtle, but, um, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's Myrtle. Sí, Myrtle. Bueno. Ahí está, Merchel. That will be the way of saying Arayan. Oh, bueno, ahorita se los voy a mandar porque se escribe también de una forma bien extraña. Uh, so it will be, yeah, Merchel. That is quite a word. Thank you. Because um, it is very interesting, to, you know, to get to learn also new um, new words like those. Wait, it's Merchel. Hmm. Ya van a ver la palabrita con la que, con la que me vine a encontrar. Okay, Mir... mm. esperen, que aquí me la muestra, sí, así sería, el detalle es que eh, donde lo había visto en un paquete de, de Arrayanes, me lo mostraba con H, pero no es necesariamente es con H, sino que solamente es así, Mirchul, bueno, entonces, that will be Arrayan, great, so Mirchul Juice, Um, okay, so we have three people now that go for coffee. Let's see if we get one more. How about, Avi? what is your favorite drink? Mm, I don't have any favorite drinks, but I like, I like piña colada. In With? every restaurant that I went, if they have piña colada, I order it. With or without? Abby? Como? With or without? Without. Without? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the flavor is, you know, like uh, the best thing when it comes to pinion coladas because, um, well, they are sweet and they have to be sweet. So I feel like having the great a great balance between the pineapple and the coconut is the key um in my case that is one of the drinks that i know how to prepare like you know one of those drinks that actually have like a process because most juices are just just maybe what um put it in the blender get the juice out and that's it maybe um you have to coil it or something but it's 
relatively easy. But piña coladas have a process. And uh, I did learn how to make them a while ago. And uh, yeah, I also like to try them before um, or like the first try that I give them is without because then you can feel the actual taste of the piña colada. So great, nice, very nice. Moving on, how about Lorena? In your case, Lorena, what is your favorite drink? Well, I have to say coffee because it's the only one drink that I can drink <laughs> because I have problems with my sugar and it is the one that I, that I, I can take without sugar. Mm -hmm. The rest, they have, they, the flavor is very, very yeah, strange very, it's yeah, bad. When, when, you, when you try. And then because it is an energetic one and I feel like with an energy when I drink it. All right, so coffee. Great, nice, nice, nice. And a shot of tequila. <laughs> okay, nice. At night, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, to go to bed before you go to bed, a, a little shot. Because and then... it is the only one too that doesn't have sugar. Doesn't have and sugar, yeah. yeah. The rest of liquors, most of them have sugar, so. Yeah. Yeah. All right, nice, very nice. Um, How about in your case, um, Sandra? What will be your favorite drink? Uh, in my case, probably horchata. Oh, okay. That is a very good option. Nice. Very, very nice. Um, sometimes I forget the love that I have for horchata. You know, it, it really happens a lot that I um, sometimes feel like I try or ask for our chat at a restaurant and I just fall in love with it again. But um, yeah, I have that strange relationship with that drink that sometimes it's like, I completely forget about its existence and then I turn into loving it very, very much. Um, I know that many of you guys don't really know the bakery Lorena that we have here in the um, Eastern side of the country. But they also sell one of the best horchatas that I have ever tried. And whenever I have the chance, you know, to um, to try one of those, it's like, I don't know. It feels like a, like a bliss, like a, like a blessing to me. Um, so, yeah, horchatas is, or I mean, horchata is a very, very good drink. Nice. How about in your case, Carla, what would be your favorite drink? Hi, teacher. Um, hey there. Maybe I have two kinds of drinks uh, that I really like. One of them is horchata too, and the other one is Coke. But uh, since I try to, to eat healthily, um, I use only drink Coke, which show sugar and water and coffee. That's, that's all my three tips or kind of drinks. Okay, so only, uh, but do you do you drink the Coke without, um, like the the sugar free one? Yes. Oh, there okay. are two. There are two tips. Uh, uh, one of them is without sugar, and the uh -huh. other one is light. But I uh -huh. think it's the same. Yeah, the flavor is basically the same because yeah. I mean a while ago they had Coke Zero, they had Coke Sugar Free, and they had Coke Light. Now I feel like I think that Coke Zero is actually gone. I think I think they don't sell Coke Zero anymore. But in my case, I do like the one without sugar, the one that has like a black yes. ring on top. Yes, mm -hmm. if, if you if you put the the Coke without sugar in the top in the freezer, I don't know. Uh huh. On the fridge. And uh, uh, yes, in the fridge, a uh, cock uh, is similar to the normal cock. Oh, okay, great. Uh, and yes. I will, I will give that a try because yeah, <laughs> normally when I, I mean, I am not a huge Coca Cola drinker. In my case, I prefer Sprite or Fresca or you know all those drinks that don't have color, uh, or not the strong colors, um, but. I do sometimes like to try, you know, a Coca-Cola, but I prefer to have the ones without sugar because of the same. I feel like the saturation of sugar in a yes. tiny can of, of, of drink is yes. too much. So, yeah, I do prefer to go uh, for the sugar-free options. However, 
hay algo raro que pasa, y eso lo voy a decir en español porque, ajá, ¿verdad? Para que quede más entendido. Hay algo extraño que yo siento con lo de la Coca-Cola sin azúcar, o la que supuestamente sin azúcar, que yo la siento más dulce. No sé por qué, pero yo siempre he sentido que la Coca-Cola sin azúcar es más dulce que la Coca-Cola regular. Pero igual. ¿Sí? Lo que, lo que sucede es que esas bebidas no es que no traigan azúcar, sino que traen como un suplemento del azúcar. Uh -huh. Ya sea stevia, lo cualquier otro edulcolorante que pueda haber. Mm. Por eso es que se tiene un sabor más, más intenso. A y le gusto. cambia el sabor también a la bebida. Ajá. Sí, porque yo siempre, siempre que las he probado me he quedado con eso, como que, a I mí, mean, la siento más dulce de los... O sea, sí, yo sé que no necesariamente es como sin azúcar 100%, pero, o al menos sin endulzantes, pero se siente, no sé, extraño, que la que supuestamente sin azúcar es más dulce que la que tiene azúcar. So yeah, it's, it's weird. Ejemplo, Uh -huh. La mayoría trae stevia y la stevia es demasiado intenso el sabor a, a lo dulce. A lo dulce. Ah. La sin azúcar la siento simple. Ah, de verdad. Sí, la siento simple. A la otra sí le siento más, como más azúcar. E incluso, no sé si alguna vez has tenido como una oportunidad de, de comprar soda y no se le siente como sabor ni Ajá. azúcar y es por velado porque le falta como el lado, como la soda, el río de la soda, por eso no se le siente ni el azúcar, ni el sabor. Ajá, ni lo gaseoso. Uh -huh. Ok, interesting. All right, great, very nice. Um, well, now that I remember, in my case, I have not shared what is my favorite drink. If it comes to regular drinks, my favorite will happen to be... Um, Naranjada. It's a kind of soda they sell in Guatemala. I don't know if you guys have ever tried it, um, but yeah, Naranjada is basically my top notch uh, when it comes to, to drinks or carbonated drinks at least. And uh, yeah, when it comes to spicier drinks, I like old Cadejo drinks. I don't know if you guys know about the, the brand as well, but um, yeah, that will be my, you know, my perspective. Okay, one more person we're going to hear, I think, from Gabriela Cortez. So, Gabriela, in your case, what is your favorite drink? In my case, my favorite drink is coffee. Coffee and, and, and soda, Coca-Cola. Okay. It, it, it was very cold, it's better. <laughs> yeah, when it's about to get frozen, it's better. Yeah, that's that's very true about about the Coca Cola. All right. Bueno, les dije verdad antes que les iba a contar algo. Esto también igual se los voy a decir en español porque es una experiencia que tuve hace quizá unos como cinco meses. A un grupo le pregunté lo mismo que si cuál era su bebida favorita y la mayoría, o sea, eran personas que era una clase que estaba teniendo que era de una a dos de la tarde. La mayoría estaba en la oficina. Y casi todos dijeron que el café. O sea, la mayoría de ellos dijeron que el café. Entonces, una cosa bien interesante fue que yo les dije, o sea, que a mí personalmente no me gusta el café. Tomo café, no estoy diciendo que no. Es como que, o sea, sí tomo café, pero no pondría el café como mi bebida favorita. Porque yo les digo que personalmente yo no encuentro ningún beneficio con el café. O sea, muchas personas dicen, ah, a mí me gusta el café porque me da energía. A mí me gusta el café porque me quita el sueño. A mí me gusta el café por eso, por lo otro. En mi caso, yo no sé, yo siento que yo uso el café como un medio, solo para poder comer pan dulce. O sea, no, nunca he sentido que el café a mí me haga perder el sueño. Porque um, hace tiempo estaba también teniendo clases. Bueno, eh, Sandra, de hecho, creo que estaba en esos días que yo siempre a la hora de la clase de las, de las 8 estaba tomando algo, siempre tenía una taza. Sí. Muchas veces era té. Y muchas veces era té. Creo que ustedes, con el grupo de ustedes, creo que hasta se veía la, la, la viñeta del té. Entonces, pero a veces hacía o pedía que me hiciesen un café. Ah, pues yo decía, es que me dando sueño y esto me va a quitar el sueño. Supuestamente, nunca me pasó. Más sueño me daba en realidad cuando tomaba café. O sea, y es como que, no sé, honestamente a mí el café no me, no me ayuda. Solo hay una vez, 
una sola vez en mi vida que yo recuerdo que el café me ha quitado el sueño, pero es porque igual, o sea, me tomé un vaso como de litro y medio, entonces no fue un café así como que, creo que fue más el azúcar que tenía el café porque era café de McDonald's, um, que que el café como tal, el que me quitó el sueño, yo sentía que toda la cara me hormigueaba, entonces, pero, o sea, fue, no sé, la única vez en la que yo he sentido que el café de verdad me ha hecho alguna clase de efecto, de ahí en más, como les digo, simplemente es un medio, o sea, para, para poder remojar el, el pan y ya, ustedes yo sé que no lo hacen así, disculpen, pero bueno, <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's the truth, in my case, coffee, I don't know. It, it's nice. I do like to drink coffee um, sometimes, but it's not like I will die, you know, for a cup of coffee. I hear that some people the other day I was getting a haircut. Well, I told you guys that I was getting a haircut last uh, Monday. And while I was at the, at the barber shop, people were coming in and they had like assistants there. And the girls were offering people, you know, if they wanted something to drink. And I think It was only me, my friend, and one more person who didn't ask for a cup of coffee. But the rest of people, they were all asking for a cup of coffee. And I was like, it's three o'clock. It's hot. Why do you guys want a cup of coffee? O sea, estaba caliente. Estaba, yo estaba sudando. Y la gente pidiendo una, una taza de café. Yo como, dude, get help. Entonces, pero igual. O sea, igual yo, yo, yo como les digo, eh, en ese grupo... Todos me dijeron, no, nah, usted quizás no se lo toma bien. Y yo, ¿cómo que no? O sea, si es café. Like, what is the proper way of drinking coffee? Entonces, pero, in my case, it has never helped. I have never really gotten any help from coffee. But anyway, um, ¿algún consejo que ustedes tengan de cómo se toma el café? <laughs> Caliente y sin azúcar, van a decir. Lo que siempre yes. dicen es como que, yeah, I mean, igual, no ayuda, he probado así por ejemplo a mi hermana eh, del café así instantáneo, a ella le gusta a veces ponerle dos sobres, y es como que ok, mm. sí, está so bien strong. yeah, strong coffee pero ni así, lo único que siento es que me queda aquel sabor todo el rato en la boca pero nada de que me quita el sueño así que, yeah, it's, it's sad por ejemplo cuando yo voy a velaciones, mejor no tomo café. El café lo uso, lo mismo, ya lo dije, como un medio nada más para remojar el pancito. Pero mejor no me tomo el resto porque me da sueño. Si me tomo el café, al rito ya estoy ahí, cabeceando. Prefiero mejor, no sé, pedir agua o algo más porque, no sé, me, me da el efecto adverso en realidad. Pero Maybe bueno. Un, uh, ¿Sí? ¿Hola? Maybe the cat. Maybe that option I have never really tried it before, but maybe maybe the cat. Yeah. One by one is good. Yeah. See. Sí. Yeah, that's true. My mother-in-law, she got as a gift. Uh, she got a, a one by this one time, and uh, she's one of those people. It, for example, when I go to the gym, normally what I do is that, um, on, on my way home. I take a, a stop at my girlfriend's house. I go there for a little bit. And um, when she had that Juan Valdez, I remember it was Juan, Juan Valdez with walnut. Um, so I remember that every night she will offer me um, a cup of coffee. I will say no most of the time, but at least once a week, I will take a cup. Um, and it was great. The taste was amazing, but the effect was simply the same i see people that's also something that i do. <laughs> this is this is gonna be bad but this is something that i do sometimes when i go to the gym i see a lot of people there in front of the gym there is like a like a cafeteria or it's more like a restaurant but there are many people who are at the gym and they get out of the gym and go to that restaurant and ask for a coffee Okay, so they come back into the gym drinking coffee. So sometimes you see up to 20 people drinking coffee. I don't see the point. They say it's because they burn more calories with the heat of the coffee. Um, but the thing that I do is that sometimes when I'm on my way, I make a stop at a convenience store and I buy um, pan tostado and uh, I offer them pan tostado. Sí, o sea, les digo para que pase mejor, porque es que en serio... Los veo que entran ahí al, al gym, ¿verdad? Con el vaso de café y todo. A veces hasta me he quemado porque lo dejan ahí tirado y no se lo terminan de tomar. Entonces, y es como que, ¿cuál es el chiste? 
Sí, así que a veces por eso llevo pan en la mochila y yo les digo, ah, aquí está un pancito. Más que todo a mis amigos, obvio, ¿verdad? Porque con los que no les hablo, pues no. Pero, ajá, uh -huh. les, les ofrezco pan para que pasen el cafecito. What is I don't know. Point? Sorry? What is the point? Yeah, I don't know. They say it's because of the heat, because they can feel like they're burning more calories when they drink the coffee, but I don't know. Honestly, I don't know what's what's the actual point that they have well, behind. Well, yeah, it's, 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 all, it's all in their minds, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Okay, well, um, so as I said, we are going to talk about past models. Um, when it comes to talking about models, I told you guys the other day um, that we are going to be um, talking mostly about things that we desire, that we are able to do, things that we are asking permission or giving permission to do. So those are like the main activities that are described by um, modal verbs. Now, when it comes to past models or phrasal models of obligation, those are the ones that we're going to be discussing tonight. So within this, we have, should have, was supposed to, had to, and need to. All describe obligation in the past, although they sometimes have different uses. Muy bien, entonces, estamos hablando de que acá, mayormente, como lo tendremos que ver, será en una escala de qué tan pertinente o qué tan alta viene a ser la obligación. Básicamente, esa será, verdad, la forma en la que lo vamos a estar eh, percibiendo. ¿Qué tanta obligación tengo? Dependiendo de cuál, o más bien, dependiendo de qué tanta obligación yo tengo con lo que voy a mencionar, ese será el modal verb apropiado que voy a usar. Tenemos entonces, I should have, I should have stayed home and studied. Then here we have what it actually means. It was a good idea, but, it, but I didn't do it. Okay, I should have. Should have is something that you say when you have the desire to do something, when you know that you have to do that, but still you just don't do it. Okay, so should have is like something you should do, you are um, required to do, but you just decide not to do it. So it's not like a huge obligation when you use should have. Then we have, I was supposed to. I was supposed to be studying this weekend. Um, so we have over here that it was required, but I didn't do it. It was required but I didn't do it. So we're taking a step up on the stairs and we see that now we have, I was supposed to. See, se suponía o estaba supuesto a. I was supposed to. So it means that um, it was something that I had to do. It was between my responsibilities, but I didn't do it. Okay, so this is like the second level when it comes to having... Um, an obligation towards something. Then we have the third one. I had to wear a uniform. I had to wear a uniform. So here, when we have uh, um, the use of had to, we are talking about an obligation, something that you are basically forced to do. Ahora, esta va a ser básicamente la parte más alta de las obligaciones, sí, el had to. Por ejemplo, um, You can say that when I was younger, I um, I should have taken care of my brothers and sisters. Sí, no vamos a decir I had to take care porque el had to no era su obligación, iba a decir vuestra, no era su obligación, sino eh, que tenía que haber sido la obligación de sus padres o alguno de sus padres. Entonces ahí sí, ¿verdad? My father had to take care of me. Sí, porque era o es básicamente su obligación. Pero... Si utilizamos el should have, o um, sería para algo que pudo haber sido una buena idea, ¿sí? Que era una buena idea que hubiese cuidado a sus hermanos, pero no estaba obligado, obligada a hacerlo. En cambio, algo que sí se menciona con had to, eso es una obligación directa, es una cosa que quizás eh, no vamos a estar del todo de acuerdo con aquella obligación, pero pues hay algo o alguien, ¿verdad?, que nos hace que cumplamos con esta obligación. Entonces, had to va a ser para ese tipo de obligaciones, principalmente también cuando son cosas que derivan de alguien más, que no dependen 
solamente de nosotros, eso sí cabe mencionarlo, que no es algo que va a depender 100% de mí, sino que también, ¿verdad? Hay como una fuerza externa que me está haciendo también que yo deba cumplir con esta obligación. Ok, next one up. I didn't have to go with my friends, but I did. I didn't have to go with my friends, but I did. So, when we use didn't have to, it means that there was no obligation, okay? It was simply my decision. It was something that I uh, did just because I felt like doing it. So, I didn't have to go with my friends, but I did. See, um, this is a very common phrase when you get a gift for, I don't know, graduation or wedding or um, birthday, Many people say, oh, you didn't have to. Sí, eso es algo que, o sea, es bien común que se diga, ¿verdad? Cuando alguien recibe un, un regalo, eh, que diga, oh, you didn't have to. Sí, o sea, como no tenías que, no te hubieses preocupado. Es como el decir, ¿verdad? No te hubieses preocupado. Entonces, es el, ah, you didn't have to. Entonces, um, podríamos agregar a ese you didn't have to la palabra bother. Sí, bother que es como no te hubieses molestado, así sería mucho más literal. You didn't have to bother, ¿sí? Pero no es tan común. Lo más común es que solamente se diga you didn't have to, ¿sí? Pero de vez en cuando ustedes pueden escucharlo así, por eso les, les aclaro, ¿verdad? Si alguien dice, ah, you didn't have to bother, significa no te hubieses preocupado. Bueno, and the last one. We have, I thought I needed to. Sí, I thought I needed to have more clothes. I thought... I needed to have more clothes. The idea behind it is that I thought it was, or this was necessary. Entonces, el needed to, normalmente, um, lo vamos a usar principalmente como modal, ¿verdad? Porque también needed se puede usar como verbo regular. Pero el needed to, ¿sí? que ese será el modal, um, vamos a utilizarlo en el momento en el que estemos eh, hablando principalmente acerca de confusiones que podríamos haber tenido. Sí. En este caso, se dice, ¿verdad? Oh, I thought I needed to. Um, si no, podríamos decir, um, I guess I needed to do this. Sí. Anything. Like, I guess I needed to um, bring a soccer ball. Sí. O sea, supuse que tenía que traer una, una pelota de fútbol. Entonces, pero... El, el needed to será utilizado principalmente como con ideas, ¿verdad? Con cosas que supuse o pensé que tenía que hacer. Así que las obligaciones van desde should have, que es algo como a media forma leve, o sea, como debí hacerlo, ¿sí? Was supposed to, que sería estaba supuesto a hacerlo. Had to, que es tuve que hacerlo, o sea, fui obligado a hacerlo o me vi obligado a hacerlo didn't have to este no tiene ninguna obligación en absoluto didn't have to and needed to sí que este viene más como les digo de la idea como el decir que, necesi que, que necesitaba hacerlo sí como más que todo este se, para que funcione como modal porque por eso cabe aclararlo el verbo needed se puede utilizar solo pero no vamos a utilizar este to después entonces, cuando utilicemos el needed solo, eh, puede ser para expresar cualquier clase de necesidad que, ten, que teníamos en algún momento. Por ejemplo, um, si alguien me pregunta, why did you leave the party so early? I can say, oh, I needed to go home to feed my cat, for example. Entonces, esa es una necesidad eh, que yo tenía, pero no necesariamente va a ser ese un verbo modal. Sí, el decir, I needed to go home. O sea, simplemente lo vamos a utilizar, ¿verdad? como el verbo así, como tal. En cambio, si lo utilizamos después de él, una frase como I thought o I guessed, eh, estamos utilizándolo ya como verbo modal. O sea, decir, creí o supuse que necesitaba hacer esto. ¿Sí? En cambio, si, um, si yo digo I needed to go, I needed to do this or do that, en ese caso va a funcionar más como decir es que necesité hacer esto, necesité hacer lo otro. Sí, en pasado de forma directa. Entonces, should have, it's for um, things that we consider that we were supposed to do or that we consider that we had um, like a, a slight obligation towards. Was supposed to is something that you are a little bit more obligated to do. Had to, an obligation straight up. Didn't have to, no obligation at all. 
needed to a sort of obligation, something that is it's there, there, okay, but it's not like a full obligation, it's like the perception of an obligation. Muy bien, eh, tenemos alguna duda con esto, porque si no, ahorita les voy a empezar a pedir ejemplos a ustedes. So, do we have any questions regarding uh, these past models? Okay, seems like we're ready. So, I would like to start hearing some examples coming from you guys. Um, you can pick whichever you can use. Um, okay, I will just try to move them over here. We're gonna use, um, should have, sorry, should have was supposed to, had to, uh, which one was it? Oh, didn't have to. And needed to. All right, so there you have them. Those are the um, models in past. Now, I would like to start hearing your examples. What are phrases or sentences in which you can put all these um, Model verbs into use with, of course, a proper use for said verbs. So let's see. Um, who would like to provide the first example? Do you guys have any examples figured out in your minds or not yet? I should have turned on the camera when I'm in class. Okay. I should have turned on the camera. when I joined the class. Great, very good, should have. In your case, I feel like you did, but uh, nice, very nice. I should have turned on the camera. Great, okay, anyone else? Avi? Um, I should have ate that dessert. Um. Okay, I should have eaten. En ese caso, uh, utilizamos el eaten porque eh, va a pasar a ser un, básicamente como si fuese un verbo perfecto. Es complejo porque sí es un tanto complicado, pero no se puede utilizar ate después del verbo have. A pesar que aquí estamos usándolo como un verbo modal, pero este otro tiene que estar en su forma eh, participia del pasado. Entonces sería should have eaten. Sí, I should eh... have. Sí. If I use any other verb, they can be in past. Todos tienen que ser siempre en pasado, participio después de un have. Después de utilizar el have, todos o sea, van a ir en pasado, participio aquí. Por ejemplo, um, qué sé yo. I should have... Uh, ¿Cuáles son los otros verbos raros que hay? I should have... Uh... Sí. Bueno, este el problema con bot es que igual es bot. Y, eh, en pasado regular, ¿verdad? Pero cuando digo raro estoy pensando más que todo, oh, should have been, ajá. Uh -huh. I should have been, sí. No vamos a, a decir, por ejemplo, uh, nada que de was o where, sino que tiene que ser en su forma del pasado participio, como sería acá. I should have eaten. Entonces esto pasa de, después de utilizar el verbo have en pasado, el verbo siguiente deberá estar en el participio. Ok, um, Luis. Okay, Luis, what is your example? Yes, I should have uh, gone to the party yesterday. Okay, I should have gone oui, to the party yesterday. Great, that is a very good example. I should have gone to the party yesterday. Nice, very nice. Uh, Imelda? I was supposed to fix my glasses. I was supposed to fix my glasses. Uh, 
no sé por qué se me ocurrió preguntarles, ¿y esto cómo lo pusiese usted en voz pasiva? <ríe> es que, o sea, me acordé cuando, cuando vi el ejemplo, sí, I was supposed to fix my glasses, um, y en eso pensé, hmm, en voz pasiva sería, I was supposed to get my glasses fixed. Pero bueno, no estamos en este tema. So, yeah, I was supposed to fix my glasses. Great, very nice. Um, I have a question. Okay. And all that models, the past model, uh, we use the past participle. Not with all of them. Because if you see here, for example, el detalle es que have, porque, el, o con el should have, porque utiliza have acá. Ese es el detalle. Pero, por ejemplo, si nos fijamos con supposed to, Sí, el verbo viene después en su forma base, ¿verdad? Porque este to, esta partícula de acá, es la que nos ayuda a evitar que este verbo tenga que estar en su pasado participio. So, yeah, have is the reason why we have to use the verbs in past participle. It's simply because of have. Si quieren culpar a alguien, culpen a have. Eh, entonces, sí, cuando tenemos esta partícula, con, con el ejemplo, ¿verdad? De supposed to, o si no, si decimos had to, didn't have to, needed to, si se fijan en ninguno de los demás, entonces nos vamos a encontrar con ese detalle. Solamente será con el have, ¿sí? Uh, ok, Gabriela. Ok, I didn't have to answer my boss call after 5 p.m. Ok. Um... All right. I didn't have to answer my boss's call after 4 p.m. I mean, 5 p.m. Great. Nice. Very nice. Setting boundaries there. Great. Um, how about Lillian? I had to go to the bed after the class. Okay. Uh, oh, wait. And it's like, yeah, had to go. Had to go to bed after the class. Vaya, aquí hay una cosa que de hecho no se los había mencionado hasta ahorita, que es bien del español, ¿sí? El hecho de decir esto, the bed after the class, es algo bien, bien, bien del español. Aquí de hecho en realidad no sería necesario ninguno de los dos the, ¿sí? Podríamos decirlo así nada más, I had to go to bed after class. Esto significa, ¿verdad? Tuve que irme a la cama después de la clase. En español, tenemos la cama, ¿sí? la clase, pero en inglés no es necesario. No siempre vamos a utilizar eh, los indicadores, en este caso son los artículos, ¿sí? no siempre los vamos a usar. Y eso es algo que se deja reservado, más que todo es el de, que es bien específico, para cosas que literal son específicas. Por ejemplo, si estamos hablando acerca de una cama, Digamos que, ah, la, cama, la última cama, último modelo que tiene este sistema ergonómico y que, um, qué sé yo, viene equipada con sistemas también de enfriamiento, calefacción. Entonces, si estamos hablando de esa cama, en ese caso sí yo digo the vet, ¿sí? The vet porque estamos hablando de esa cama, ¿sí? La cama, la cama específica de la que estábamos hablando. Um, the class lo dejé al principio porque sí, o sea... La clase es un poquito más específica, podríamos decir, ¿verdad? Después de la clase, o sea, y estamos hablando, nos referiríamos directamente a esta clase, cuando hacemos referencia así a la clase. Pero, si no, um, lo más común, en realidad, que lo más común es simplemente decir class, nada más. Por ejemplo, eh, si ustedes ven, consumen cualquier clase de, de, de serie o cosas así en, en inglés, Van a fijarse, ¿verdad? Que dice, oh, meeting after class. Sí, nunca dice meeting after the class. Um, si no, a veces, por ejemplo, dice meeting after math class. Pero ese the no es lo más común. En cambio, para nosotros sí. Entonces, por eso les digo, es una cosa bien del español. El ver, ¿verdad? Que estamos utilizando el de, de, de cada ratito. Um, pero, ajá, es algo que con el tiempo nosotros vamos dejando de lado la utilización tan común, ¿verdad? De, de decir el de. Muy bien, um, quisiera ver un ejemplo más al menos para luego movernos a lo siguiente. So, do I have anyone else who has thought of an example using models? Oh. I had to wear boots. In Sorry? The I had to wear boots in my wear. 
Okay, I have to read, um, had to, sorry, had to. Had to read books in my work. Nice, I had to read books in my work. Uh, we were supposed to be happily ever after. <laughs> That's a good one. We were supposed to be um, happily ever after. Great, nice, that is a nice example. Bueno, muy bien. Vamos a ver, tenía por ahí a Sandra y Leslie, pero quizás en la siguiente actividad vamos a tener la oportunidad de participar. Acá, verbs that go with problems. So, we, or I think that you guys have already seen this, um, that there are some verbs that are specific to mention some problems. Now, uh, these verbs are often used to talk about problems. And, uh, of course, the problem is always going to be um, different. So here I simply just typed in a problem and you may decide what it is. Um, for example, when you say aggravate, aggravate, esto es básicamente agravar, ¿verdad? Aggravate, aquí este problema puede ser, por ejemplo, aggravate mmm, my divorce. No me estoy divorciando, solamente es un ejemplo. My divorce process. See, sí. my divorce process. Aggravate my divorce process. Meaning my, my what? Mm, my brother-in-law, let's say. Meaning my brother-in-law aggravated my divorce process. Sí, ese podría ser eh, un ejemplo de lo que podría pasar con aggravate. Ahora, avoid. Avoid. Aquí podemos mencionar. I avoid... Um, Seeing my ex-wife when I pick up. Ay, suena como si de verdad ya me separé. When I pick up um, the kids. Sí. I avoid seeing my ex-wife when I pick up the kids. A ver, el seeing my ex-wife sería el problema. Conste, este nada más sería el problema. No es que todo, ¿verdad? El problema sería... Este, lo que yo, el, el, digamos, más que todo aquí, porque eh, iría con el, con el verbo, ¿verdad? Avoid. So, I avoid seeing my ex-wife. Okay, cause. Cause, um, you can say a car accident. That is a problem, of course. Cause a car accident. She caused a car accident because she was, um, what? She was distracted, let's say. Solo así, ¿verdad? She caused a car accident because she was distracted. Or he caused a car accident because he was, um, what? Talking by phone. Yeah, he was on the phone. Estaba pensando en algo más, no sé, como, um, maybe looking at the phone or something like that. But yeah, he caused a car accident because he was talking on the phone. Great. Now, deal with deal with um i have to deal with my kids school uy, perdón. Sí, aquí. kids school meetings yo sé que no necesariamente es un problema pero puede ser para alguien so i have to deal with my kids school meetings all semesters or all semester i have to deal with my kids school meetings all semester sí Entonces, tengo que lidiar con las reuniones de la escuela de mi hijo todo el semestre. Muy bien. Then we have identify. Um, Joan identified the missing, the missing book, let's say. The missing book on the bookshelf. Sí. Ya identificó el libro que estaba perdido. The missing book on the bookshelf. So, that will be another problem. Uh, then we have ignore. Ignore is very similar to avoid. Okay, when we say ignore, we are using a very, very similar structure of uh, our, similar to the one that we use when we use avoid. Um, let's say that we have decided to ignore um, the fact that we don't get along. The fact that we don't get along. Sí. Hemos decidido ignorar el hecho de que no nos llevamos bien. So we have decided to ignore the fact that we don't get along. 
So that would be another example. Uh, let's see. How about run into? Um, my dad ran into a gas leak. A gas leak in his car. See, ¿Sí? a gas leak in his car. So eso sería otro problema, verdad? My dad ran into a gas leak in his car. Mi papá se encontró con un um, ¿cómo sería? Con un un liqueo, liqueo sí, un liqueo de um, de gasolina, verdad, en su carro. So a gas leak in his car. And then we have solve. Um, so we can say we solved the mystery of the wait what the heck well the mystery of the missing shirt let's say of the missing shirt vaya aquí si se fijan utilicé el the porque se supondría que ya antes habría mencionado yo uh, que era el misterio y que además había una camisa perdida entonces sería el misterio de la camisa perdida ahí sí utilizo directamente los artículos porque se supone que estoy hablando acerca de cosas um, aisladas verdad cosas que la otra persona debería conocer debería estar al tanto de cuál es ese the que yo estoy mencionando pero bueno en final de cuentas todas estas cosas son simply problems, ¿sí? Entonces, ustedes igual pueden decir aggravate a problem, avoid a problem, cause a problem, deal with a problem, um, or with problems. A, sorry, you can say, for example, identify a problem, ignore a problem, run into a problem, or solve a problem. This word or the replacement, a problem is going to be used mostly when you don't want to mention what the problem necessarily is. So, yeah, you have that option of saying a problem when you don't want to clarify specifically what is the problem. Can uh, I make a question? Yes, sure. When you are in, in the platform in 2.5, it's not a shake. You have the number four, Jill Don always. In parentheses, makes his problem worse. For mm -hmm. me, it's aggravate, aggravate, but it didn't work with anyone. Hmm. Yeah, it should be aggravate. However, it depends. Uh, what tense is it in? O sea, está en the, tiempo the presente. Presente. No, yeah, presente. In, yeah, because it is my. It is. Jill Don always makes his problems worse. Okay. And you have to change makes for another another uh -huh. verb, no? Yeah. Is it uh can it be in third person? Aggravates? I, I have yeah, yeah, yeah. that. Aggravates. Aggravates, did you try with that? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. We'll see. Because I don't remember that one right now. But to, just... to send it to you. Sure, sure. Yeah. I am trying to load. Ya les dije que conmigo se tarda. Aquí van a ser yeah. eh, van a presenciar eso. Don't worry. Yeah. So it takes it takes a while. Well, okay. uh, but in the meanwhile, I would like to hear what examples can you guys um think of when it comes to using all these um these words that come with problems. So what will be a problem or something that you can say that can be aggravated? I would like to hear. The whole sentence. Sí, así como yo estaba tratando de, de darles ejemplos, así me gustaría escuchar ejemplos completos, ¿verdad? De oraciones que a ustedes se les puedan ocurrir when it comes to, um, to this topic of solving problems and mostly when it comes to um, mentioning these words that are used with problems or verbs that go with problems. All right, so who would like to um, share an example? Pueden elegir cualquiera. O sea, no significa que vamos a usar solo aggravate o, o vamos a ir en orden, ¿verdad? Okay, let's see. Okay, my example is uh, um, I ignore WhatsApp message when I don't feel well. Okay, I ignore WhatsApp messages. Ooh. Okay, there we go. WhatsApp messages. Ah, estoy poniendo doble las palabras, las letras incorrectas. Okay, there we go. Messages when I don't feel well. 
great. That's nice. I ignore WhatsApp messages when I don't feel well. I ignore WhatsApp messages all the time, even if I feel well. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, anyone else with an example? Vamos a ver. En el caso de... Lilian, do you happen to have any example of a sentence that can come with any of these words that go with a problem? Yes, I avoid listening music when I am concentrated working. Okay, I avoid listening to music when? I am concentrated in the work, in okay. the job. Uh, in my work. A ver, aquí la única cosita sería esta, esa palabra. Vamos a cambiarla por un focused, ¿sí? Focused, enfocado. Okay. Ajá, porque concentrated, eh, normalmente la palabra concentrated se usa más con sustancias. Cuando estamos hablando acerca de, um, digamos, eh, a concentrated what? A concentrated cheese, a concentrated uh, gas solution. Concentrated es más que todo para cosas que son así, ¿verdad? Como muy fuertes o sustancias bastante fuertes. Um, básicamente, esos serían los momentos en los cuales los podríamos utilizar. Ok. La palabra concentrated, sí. Uh, me decía entonces, Lorena, era la sección 2, ¿verdad? 2.5, yeah. Ok, so, here we go. 2.5, no, let's check. And we have... Number four. Jill. Um, it is in pass. I... I didn't try in pass. Yes, in pass. Yeah, I said, I, said, I said it in the past. So, yeah, there you have it. It's in the past. Wow. So, Jill and... don't always aggravated his problems. Uh, okay, aggravated his problems. Thanks. Yeah, aggravated. That was the one. Well... Problem solved. That's great. Yeah. Muy bien. <laughs> can sleep tonight. <laughs> yeah. We can go have a sound sleep tonight. All right. So, uh, another one. Can we have anyone else with an example here? Acaban de decir ignore y también avoid. Parece que ustedes son del tipo que simplemente nos quedamos ahí de lado. Cualquiera, creo yo. Okay. Um, um, yes, I, I have a, an example, but I don't know if it's okay. Okay. So this, this is, in my job, I try to solve problems with techniques. I try to solve problems with techniques. What uh -huh. do you mean by techniques? Um, like, like psychology techniques. Mm, mm, okay, yes, 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 yes. You can use it that way. In my job, I try to solve problems problems with techniques. Yes, when it comes to that, yes. See, sí. ah, cierto, that you are a psychologist. I deal with my girlfriend's bad character. <laughs> Parece que Josué anda on fire hoy con los ejemplos así en el chat. Okay, that is a very good example. In my job, I try to solve problems with techniques. Yes, great, great example. Uh, and then we have this one. I deal with my girlfriend's bad character. All right. Alguien que conozca a Josué y conozca a la novia para que le cuente. A mí me gusta el drama. A mí porque me gusta el drama. Pues sí, ya vamos a ver, José. No, mi amor, no era la broma. Le mandan el link de la clase de hoy. Una bromita. Yo porque el profe se riera. No, pero sí, a veces pasa. Things that happen. Es parte del proceso. All right. So, uh, yeah, dealing with their character is something that happens. Um, any other example you, you come, can come to your minds? How about you, Carla? Can you think of an example? Yes, Or... teacher. Okay. Uh, um, uh, when, I, uh, when a problem comes at work, I run in to solve it. Okay, comes at work. Aquí le voy a dar un poquito. Vamos a poner, I always run into a solution. Ah, okay. 
¿ok? When a problem comes at work, I always run into. Aquí con esto de utilizar el run into estaba bien. Sí. I always run into a solution. Siempre me encuentro con una solución. So, great. Um, por ejemplo, si quisiésemos decir el solve it, como se había dicho, podríamos decirlo de otra forma. When a problem comes at work, I always... Um, ¿Cómo? Find a way. I always find a way. Find a way... To solve, to solve it. it. Uh -huh. Or try to solve it too. Yeah, I mean, I always try to solve it. See, I always um, try to solve it. Always try to solve it. El way que lo resuelve. Muy bien. When a, uh, when a problem comes at work, I always try to solve it. Great. Bueno, no me había fijado que básicamente nuestro tiempo se ha agotado. Sí. Um, so it means that we are to stop it here and to continue tomorrow. So Lorena, we have it clear, right? It's in the past. Yeah. So, all right, great. Um, yes. For the rest of you guys, thank you very much for your attention and participation in this evening's class. I hope we are going to be meeting here again tomorrow to continue learning and practicing. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. Have a really Bye. good night and Bye. see you tomorrow. Bye-bye for Bye now. Sure. Cheers.